Wilkinson, and I'm a consultation specialist with SNC Lavalin. Today we are continuing our series of live stream topics as our project moves through caution round two of the environmental assessment phase. The topics we are covering parallel our project activities. So we hope these will help our listeners and viewers better understand the project and provide input along the way. So let's get started. Uh, today we're going to talk about what's called the multiple accounts analysis approach to the valuation of road corridor alternatives. And uh, it sounds really confusing, but it won't be at the end of it, I promise you that. Uh, and, and the purpose of for us doing this is to give community members a better understanding of the thinking behind and the activities associated with, with the overall process um, of evaluating alternatives. So let's get started with a bit of background. And um, as we always do, we provide a little bit of a project background um, just to get everybody up to the same level. Uh, it doesn't take very long, but I think it, it just helps everyone uh, sort of uh, understand everything more clearly. So. Uh, let's move to the next slide, please, to talk a bit about where the project exists. And um, this project, um, Web Bukoy Supply Road, is a planned all-season road that runs from Web Bukoy First Nation, which is located about 250 kilometers south of Hudson Bay and 250 kilometers west of James Bay. So the road runs from the airport in, or is planned to run from the airport in Webequay, in the settled, settlement area of Webequay, to the southeast, to the McFalds Lake area, in, in all, which is also in the Ring of Fire uh, area as well. So that sort of sets the scene there. We're talking northwestern Ontario. And now we'll move a bit to talk, move now to talk a bit about the um, purpose of the Webequay Supply Road. So there's three main purposes. The first is to move materials, supplies, and people from Webequay Airport to the McFalds Lake area. The second is to provide employment and economic development opportunities to Webequay, but at the same time, allowing them to preserve and enhance their language and culture. And then final purpose um, identified here is to provide experience and training opportunities for youth to help encourage the pursuit of, of additional skills through post-secondary education. Now we're going to move a bit to talk a bit to talk about the project itself and what it includes. And I've mentioned this um, many times before. A project like this, an all-season road, is not just the does not just include only a road. There's more to it to that and than that, and I will get into it in a minute. But just some basic uh, descriptions of the planned road. It's planned to be 107 kilometers long, extending from Webequay First Nation um, Airport, as I mentioned, to McFalds Lake. Um, of that 107 kilometers, 17 kilometers sit within reserve lands, Webequay First Nation reserve lands. We also have a planning corridor, a preferred corridor that we are working within at this point. So this is our planning corridor. Our planning corridor is two kilometers wide, extending from the beginning to the end of the project. Um, and within that planning corridor, we will position we will position the the road depending on a number of factors and um, the cleared area will actually be 35 meters that that is the width of the of the right of way for the two lane gravel surface road continuing on with the project description uh, as we all know there's a lot of lakes and rivers in the area and um, it's inevitable that the road will cross some of the bigger ones. So it'll be crossing, it'll be making three major water body crossings. One of the lake, Winisk Lake, and the other two of, of rivers. So 
The first one, as we move out of Webequay, is the Winisk Lake crossing, going from the island that the Webequay uh, settlement is on, across Winisk Lake, a span of about 200 to 250 meters, to the mainland, and then from there, the road moves southeast, and will cross, uh, then crosses Winniscasis Channel. Uh, that crossing is, I believe, anywhere from 40 to 50 kilometers wide. And then the road will then move south and then turn east across the James Bay lowlands. And the final major crossing is of the Mukatai River, which is about 35 to 40 meters wide. So those are the major, the three major water body crossings. There will be 23 other water body crossings uh, along the route as well. Now, this project, as I mentioned, is not just a two-lane gravel road. It includes both temporary and permanent aggregate pit or rock quarry areas that would have equipment for processing um, rock, crushing it down into the different sizes for different purposes for the construction and maintenance of the road, as well as sort of a medium-sized rock like a riprap that could be used to protect um, culvert uh, outlets at uh, the smaller water crossings. And then the construction camps, um, these are these would be temporary, of course, and they're to accommodate the construction crews and operations and maintenance offices. So those, those ones, the operations and maintenance offices would be permanent. Um, but again, included with those permanent facilities like uh, operations and maintenance offices would be uh, supportive facilities such as wastewater treatment plant, or a portable, a potable uh, water storage as well, drinking water. And then uh, finally, um, there would be on a, on a temporary basis during construction, there would be storage and lay down yards for the, for the storage of, of both equipment and materials. Now let's move to talk a little bit and review a little bit about the alternatives assessment process. So the alternatives assessment process states that for every undertaking, this is uh, when it comes to an, uh, environmental assessments, for every undertaking, quote, a reasonable range of alternatives must be considered during an environmental assessment. So alternatives include alternatives to and alternative methods. So when we talk about alternatives to, what we're talking about um, alternatives to the proposed undertaking or project in this case, these are functionally different ways of approaching or dealing with a problem or opportunity. When we talk about alternative methods of carrying out a proposed undertaking or project, these are different ways of doing the same activity. And now I'll show you a couple of examples to help explain this a little bit better. When we talk about alternatives to, um, again, functionally different ways of approaching and dealing with a problem or opportunity. In our case, it might be alternative modes of transport, such as cargo hovercraft, cargo um, uh, airships, um, uh, upgrading an existing trail to a, re a seasonal winter road, if that existing uh, trail existed, managing traffic demand, or just doing nothing, or doing a new all-season road, which is the case, uh, it, which is our case. Now let's move to talk a little bit about examples of alternative methods. When we talk about alternative methods, again, there are different ways of doing the same activity. So when we're talking about a, an, an all-season road, these would be different routes. So in our case, we have three different alternatives, alternative route one, Routes one, two, and three. So let's move now to talk about our main topic. And our main topic today is the analysis of alternatives um, using what's called multiple accounts analysis. We're going to hopefully uh, explain clearly what this actually is. So I've got a table on, on the screen here now. And when we talk about multiple uh, accounts analysis, uh, the account can be considered the same as a factor. And when we talk about factors, it's best if I use examples to make it 
easier to understand. So factors might be, for example, indigenous land use and interests or biological environment. These, these are examples of factors. And associated with these factors are criteria or valued components. So these are things that could be studied uh, or things that, for example, community members have, have identified as being important to them. So, for example, Indigenous current and historical use of lands and resources for traditional purposes. That's a big topic, obviously, but that's certainly one, one valued component. And then within that valued component, there are what you call indicators. And the indicators are ways of measuring impacts. So if you look at this table, you've got lands and resources for traditional purposes. Now, what would the indicators, what could some of the indicators be of that? Well, there could be um, uh, areas, uh, area of habitat, caribou habitat impacted, a number of hunting and fishing cabins um, or camps impacted, number of fishing sites impacted, number of hunting and trapping sites impacted, uh, area of plant harvesting and um, gathering sites impacted. So those are, those are ways, those are measures, ways that we can figure out, like try to quantify or put into numbers or somehow get a better idea of impacts. So these indicators are associated with valued components, which are then part of a factor. And then just to, to give you another example here, um, we could look at the cultural, uh, well, I guess we could, we could look at, let's take another one. Let's look at biological environment and let's look at moose, for example. So with, with moose, you have areas of high, um, you know, in terms of indicators, you could have areas of high, moderate or low quality winter habitat area directly impacted by the road, the road development. You could have, um, with these same areas within two kilometers and 10 kilometers of the route. You could have areas of aquatic wetland feeding habitat, like moose feeding habitat impacted, or within two kilometers and 10 kilometers as well too. So as you can see, for each of these factors, there are valued components. And then for the valued components, there are indicators or ways of measuring impacts. So let's talk a little bit about the weighting and scoring component of multi-factor or, or multi-account analysis. Um, a weighting system has been assigned to the factors and associated criteria and indicators that apply sort of a, what you call a relative level of importance, meaning one is maybe more considered more important than another. Now we've treated all of these, all the factors equally. However, you could do this using this computer-based system. You could weigh one factor or one layer more than another. And, um, and then of course, because one is considered more important than another, it has more influence in the overall sort of scoring system as well. So based on the spatial analysis of the data for each alternative route, a score is assigned where the route intersects the various indicators. A low score in this scoring system is considered good because it means less impact and a high score is considered bad. Now, before we go any further, I did receive a question here. So I am just going to access this question. If you don't mind here. Okay, I'm just trying to access this question. So the question we received was uh, from MG70 uh, was, has the physical path been determined as to where the road will be? So what has been determined to date has been uh, a preferred corridor within which we have three alternatives. So we have three specific routes within that corridor that's two kilometers wide. So I hope that uh, that helps things there. And we'll move on now to our next slide to talk, to illustrate this multiple factor analysis, if we can move to the next slide. Okay, here we go. This is uh, This makes it much easier to explain. So you can see on the screen, you see that worm-like shape 
That worm-like shape is the preferred corridor, um, local study area. Well, the larger worm is the is the preferred corridor. You have a local study area, and then you have a, a broader study area. So within that local study area, you have three alternatives in the three different colors. Now, underneath those lines are different colored areas, and those different colored areas indicate um, scores um, from the reddish to the blue, from bad to good. So basically, the lower the score, the less impact um, in that particular area. So the, the alternative that scores the lowest for a factor or for all factors is one that has less impact. That's basically what it means. So if we can move to the next slide, we'll do a little bit of a, a zoom in here. And this will help explain things a little bit better. You can see the three alternatives in the uh, in sort of the purplish color and the green and the yellow. And um, you see we've highlighted the darker areas where the scores are higher. These would be sensitive areas for, for, for different reasons. Um, in this particular case, it's probably because there might be a sensitive wetland area or, or, or maybe it's, there's, it's of cultural significance but it's considered to be sort of not an ideal area for the road corridor to be. Um, and then as you move closer to blue, you move into less sensitive areas. So there's fewer points associated with that. And again, the lower the score, the, the more, um, more preferred that route would be because the less impact it has. If we can move to the next slide. So this, this bar graph here looks, looks maybe confusing, but it actually really isn't. So I was talking earlier about the different factors uh, involved, indigenous environment, biological environment, physical environment, socioeconomic environment, and technical considerations. We have all these different factors involved. And then we have the different alternatives associated with each. And then you have scores for each. So for example, Alternative one um, had a score of, it looks like 18 point, 18.75 um, for indigenous environment. And again, lower the score, the less impact. So you can see under indigenous environment, the number one ranked alternative was alternative three because it had the lower score. Not by a lot, but it was still a lower score. So this gives you an idea of of how each alternative ranked according to each of the factors, indigenous environment, biological environment, physical environment, socioeconomic environment, and technical considerations. We can move to the next slide, please. So the next slide, um, what we're talking about here is we show each of the alternatives and it shows how much each factor made up uh, made up of this, how much each factor uh, 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 contributed to the score for that alternative. So, for example, socioeconomic contributed the least amount for, if we look at alternative one, it contributed the least amount to the score compared to uh, physical environment. So it just gives you an idea of, um, you know, which, which factors were the most, were the most uh, key. If we can go back to that slide again for a sec, please. Thank you. So again, the lowest score is the perf would indicates the least amount of impact. So when we look at the total score here, the number one ranked alternative is alternative three, based on based on this uh, this analysis. And then the next table shows the summary of evaluation. So um, this is where you know this is where you take all this so you're thinking when you think about this you're taking a lot of different layers of complicated information you're combining them together and you're overlaying them and in a pretty clear transparent way you're breaking it down and you're able to make complicated decisions in a very visual way that that's easier to understand so um, the table we have here shows each factor biological, physical, indigenous, socioeconomic, and technical. And 
and how it ranked in, ter in terms of preferred, less preferred, or least preferred from, you know, so preferred is highest ranked, less is medium, and least is, is lowest ranked um, for each alternative. So it allows you, this, this table's got a lot of information sort of baked into it, actually. Uh, there's a lot of information there. So if we move to the next slide now, um, today's topic is a little bit of a more complicated one, but I, I hope that you were able to follow that okay. Basically, we're talking about taking a lot of different layers of information, putting them on top of each other and, and weighing, them, weighing them if we choose to weigh them. And by weighing, I mean making some layers more important or contribute more to the overall score than others. So we do this, and then we and we do it for the purposes of, in a really sort of thorough, comprehensive way, coming up with um, a preferred choice and a ranking, and and having it, and doing it in a way that's that can be defended, that 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 is clear and transparent, um, and that takes into account all the information that we've collected during the course of the environmental assessment. So there's a lot to it. Um, I hope you follow, we were able to follow it okay, and I want to encourage everyone to contact us um, if they have any questions or comments about this project. Uh, we thank you very much for the question we received earlier, and um, we'll be back again in a couple of weeks. That wraps up today's discussion um, of the multiple accounts analysis approach um, for the evaluation of road court or uh, alternatives. We hope this was helpful, and we hope it encourages you to join us again in a couple of weeks. Um, again, keep in touch with our project team uh, via the contact information available on the website, supplyroad.ca. There's a lot of information on the website. Um, we, I also want to encourage uh, your community to reach out to us. Uh, we would, we would love to visit your community and talk to you about this project and, and listen to your concerns or comments about the project. We will follow your, your community's consultation protocols, or if you'd like to meet at another location, we're happy to do that as well. We're, we're willing to accommodate in whatever way to, uh, to get your feedback. So we look forward to that. We are going to be visiting a few communities in the next month or so, which we're really looking forward to, especially uh, post COVID. And um, I just want to say miigwetch and we will talk to you again in two weeks when we talk about the evaluation of alternatives for supportive infrastructure. Miigwetch. See you soon.